Hi, this is Shia Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Graham Cluley. Graham, pleasure to be here with you. A pleasure to be invited on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Graham, can you please introduce yourself to our audience, tell them who you are and a little bit about what you do? Uh, yeah, I'm Graham Cluley, and I have been, well, I started off as a computer programmer. I used to write antivirus software in the early 1990s. And over the years, I stopped being a programmer and became someone who spoke about threats, wrote about threats, podcasts about security threats. Um, so I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I know it's such an outrageously long time, but uh, in some ways, things have changed a lot. In other ways, things haven't changed that much at all. So uh, there's plenty to talk about. Certainly. Always a pleasure getting into discussion with you. So Graham, let's talk about cybersecurity threats that organizations, but also us individually that we're facing today. Can you talk a little bit around the type of threats that us as people are have, that have to be aware of right now and what we can do to protect ourselves, just as a global thought? So, so what's changed over the years is that the problem has got so much bigger. We, whereas we used to see kids in their back bedrooms writing viruses or Trojans or, or trying to scam you, Today, it's organized criminals and organized criminal gangs who are working to exploit as many unsuspecting computer users as possible, whether they be in business or at home. And of course, the huge difference over where we were 20, 25 years ago is that everyone has, is carrying a computer around with them all of the time. Everyone is connected to the internet at home and in the workplace. Everyone's got email. And so the opportunities for the scammers, for the virus writers, for the hackers, to exploit our increased use of the internet is, is greater than ever before. So there's all manner of different scams which are going out there. And I think for the, the typical computer user, it can all feel rather overwhelming. It can all feel like, oh, what am I going to do about all of these things? But the truth is, a, a lot of the threats, you probably don't need to worry about that much. There's probably like a core element to it which are the things you should worry about and some simple steps you can take to protect yourself against them. Right. And what type of threats do you see today? The ones that people should be more aware about? So the kind of things which I think the typical user, if you were an end user, if you were at home as well, yeah. it's not very sexy, but things like phishing attacks, you know, which is not sophisticated technology. Anyone can create an HTML email. Anyone can forge an email header and make it appear as though it's coming from one organization than another and use some social engineering maybe to get you to click on an attachment or, or click on a, a link which might take you somewhere malicious. So that, that's not something sexy, not something that's going to make lots of headlines, but that's probably the majority of what we see are, are scams along that basis. And you see that, of course, in the workplace as well. But there, they're trying to steal your corporate passwords rather than your online banking passwords, your PayPal passwords, in order to gain access to your email systems, in order to gain access to your network. And one of the hugest developments, the, the, the kind of thing which I would really be worried about, one of the things I'd be worried about if I was running a business would be business email compromise, yeah. which is where the scammers are trying to trick your accounts department into paying for work um, which has maybe really been done for your organization by one of your partners. But in fact, it's a scammer contacting your HR department, sending them a fake invoice, pretending to be the company. And the reason, the way in which the scammers have found out all that information about a project or construction work or, or whatever it is that's going on is because they broke into one of your staff's email accounts. They found out about a genuine project, they set up a fake bank account, and now they're sending an invoice through trying to fool your accounts department. We'll also think about the wrong Certainly, we'll also think about tricking the user to give over information, becoming a trusted source, or grabbing all information across somebody who overshares across social media, or just in general is putting out random information that people are looking to source to go ahead and grab that attack. Have you seen a lot of that as well? Oh, right. Abs absolutely. I mean, the, I, social media certainly plays its part in this because people overshare all the time and aren't aware. Or maybe they think, oh, this particular post that's safe, but when you begin to gather all these different data points and, and, and put them together, you realize that there's a huge amount of information which can be correlated and collated, and the picture begins to emerge as a result of that. So individuals, I think, I really feel that if we're working inside a company, we are all part of the security department, we're all part of IT security, because we all have that little bit of a gatekeeper role which we can play 
as to what information we share with the outside world, whether we're clicking on links. You know, we're, we're sort of the last guard in a way. You can't just expect your IT department to do everything. We all as individuals have to be a little bit clued up about computer security as well to prevent ourselves getting into trouble. Certainly, and I think that lends itself to the whole discussion around cyber hygiene within an organization of having the ongoing training, the global awareness, zero trust, updated security and patching, all those things within organization needs to be implemented. But in terms of organizations also itself, as a global organization, what type of attacks are you seeing there as well as something, let's call it in the future of work, when as we're advancing in the cybersecurity world, what do organizations need to be the most worried about in the types of attacks coming towards us today? I think although we see lots of headlines about zero day attacks and you know vulnerabilities and if there's not a patch or state sponsored hacking and you know those are genuine threats but frankly if an enemy state or an intelligence agency wants to break into your organization there's very little you can do to stop them um, other than encrypting your data but you know the chances are they could plant someone who works inside your company for instance to access your data very little that you can do about those things worry about the real world threats so there's business email compromise which we've just spoken about. There's also ransomware, and there's this new evolution in ransomware which has emerged over the last year or so as a result of groups like the Maze Ransomware Gang and some others as well, where they don't just encrypt and lock up your data so you can no longer access it, but they actually exfiltrate your data as well. They steal your data. So not only can you not access your data, but the bad guys have it too. And what that means is that the traditional defense against ransomware of have you got a secure backup isn't actually a solution. Because even if you can restore your data and get back up and running again, the fact remains that bad guys have got your data. And what they're doing is they're blackmailing you that unless you pay the ransom demand, they are going to publish it on the internet or sell it on the black market, or they'll contact journalists uh, to, to publicize the fact that you've been leaked and they will dribble out embarrassing and sensitive information from your breach data. I, I run a blog where I talk about new breaches and things like this and I am regularly contacted by hackers who say, hey, we've hacked this organization. Here's the data we've got about them. Do you want to write about this and how embarrassing it is? No. And I, I feel very uncomfortable, <laughs> obviously, helping the extortionists do their job and their dirty work. I don't, I don't want to get involved in that. So I, like, I'm not going to publicize the information which you've stolen. I'm not going to be an accessory to that theft. You know, I refuse to do that. But there are other journalists who will do that. And of course, if it goes on the internet, generally, no it's out for everyone. Certainly. So on that topic, obviously, people are very worried about that and worried about ransomware attacks. What would you say are the top two things organizations can do to protect themselves from such a threat and such an attack? So, although I've said backups aren't a complete defense against it, it's for most ransomware it is. At least you can recover and you can get your data back. It's this data exfiltrating ransomware, which is the, the most dangerous from that point of view. You also need to keep your systems patched uh, and secure against the latest vulnerabilities. We've seen some attacks uh, in recent months where people had patches. They may even have known that the vulnerability was there, but they didn't roll out the patch. So you need install security patches because the bad guys are going to be exploiting it. And the other part is something which you touched on just now is about raising user awareness, about educating your staff about security threats. And I, I think some companies think, oh, crumbs, this is too difficult. You know, we can, we can explain this to the nerds, but we can't necessarily explain it to the regular computer users. And I, I would dispute that. I think most people inside an organization can have their awareness of security threats raised. And What's important is that you don't just do that at the point where they get inducted into a company, but have it as a regular, ongoing process and making it imaginative, making it fun and engaging yeah. so that people truly get on board with this idea that they are part of IT security as well and they have some responsibility and power. Well, great points. And to your point about backups, I just want to add that obviously I'm sure you'd say this as well, the backups should be stored off-prem. It shouldn't be yes. backups within your organization because that's kind of not useful to an organization. That's one. And in terms of the updated OS systems, you need to have that within your organization so you're being able to accept these patches when they come through. And obviously within the organization to have certain protocol about updating the patches and security, who's responsible for it, how it gets done, what the rollout should be like, and it shouldn't just be a wild west over there to wrap it all together. And 
there's there's two things that you're, you're, you're absolutely right about that. One is I understand some companies' nervousness about the latest security updates and rolling them out across tens of thousands of computers. Perhaps we've we've all seen the horror stories of sometimes when a security update goes wrong yeah. and causes more problem than the actual threat. So obviously you should stagger the rollout. Yeah. Um, you may want to just do it on a small number of computers at first. The other one about the backups. You're absolutely right. It needs to be offsite. It needs to be secure. Um, I remember the case, uh, which I wrote about on my blog, of one American city which got hit by a ransomware attack. And the yeah. mayor stood up at the press conference and said, we've got backups, so we're going to recover from our backups. We're not going to pay the bad guys. It later turned out that the backups consisted of users copying files from one folder on their yeah. hard drive into another folder on the same hard drive. So they were technically backups, but really... Let's, let's use backups a little loosely there. Obviously, I think uh, our audience certainly understands what it means to have a proper backup off-prem. Well, Graham, this has been lovely. Thank you for taking your time out to share your insights with our audience. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.